Okay. So, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, this CGF event related to the Forest Positive Coalition. This is today's Climate Week. And a year ago, we launched the Forest Positive Coalition. So it's therefore our pleasure, a year in the making, to report back on what has been going on at the CGF Forest Positive Coalition level. We entitled this event Reporting for Transformational Change because today we are very pleased to also release our report, Nurturing Transparency, which speaks about our KPIs and how, from a forest positive perspective, we intend to be progressing in the years to come in delivering our theory of change when it comes to uh, enabling a forest positive future. So today we have a panel that will discuss uh, about the numerous aspects of reporting and transparency. Uh, but since at the CGF we are a CEO-led organization, we have the privilege of being sponsored by a retailer and manufacturer CEO in the people of Carrefour, this, uh, Alexandre Bompard, the French retailer, and Grand Tree, the uh, American manufacturer, Mars. Uh, and so we'll hear about them in a minute, addressing you with a message. To tackle the scale of the challenges we will face, the world needs business at its best. Of course, the existential and operational risks from the climate emergency are profound, but so are the opportunities for addressing them. Companies that are leading the way are not only helping future generations to thrive, but also setting themselves up to succeed in tomorrow's economy. The Consumer Goods Forum provides a way for businesses to work together to be ahead of the curve. Not waiting for legislation to stipulate requirements, not just notching up compliance, but committing to innovating in order to achieve a climate advantage. And while we know discussions around sustainable food systems, the welfare of people and decarbonisation are critical, what we really need to see is action and impact on the ground, in the areas and communities that need it most. The Forest Positive Coalition of Action was launched because we recognise the need to change how we're approaching this critical challenge. Doing more of the same isn't going to drive the transformation required. We need to be our own biggest critics if we are to mitigate the global impacts of the climate crisis and ensure that the people and communities in our supply chains can all thrive. For the Forest Positive Coalition of Action, 20 of the world's leading retailers and manufacturers have joined together to help end deforestation. We have a shared commitment to eliminate forest damage and destruction from our supply chains of palm oil, soil, pepper, pulp, and packaging and beef, and to be open about our progress. We're now 12 months into this journey and launching our first annual report where we share our collective progress against an aligned set of key performance indicators. It's a significant milestone for our industry, but just one of many steps on the path to ending deforestation and helping to mitigate climate change. Of course, we can't do this alone, and you'll see our stakeholders' voices represented in this report as well. We hope it demonstrates we are serious about doing our part and inspires more businesses to join us. We know that acting on our individual supply chain is not enough to save the world's forests. Everyone, from businesses to governments, to the financial sectors, to NGOs, forest farmers and communities, has a role to play. And we are eager to work with everyone toward a more forest positive future. Today, we are one step closer to our goal. But we know there's so much more to do.
So many thanks again to our co-sponsors, which at CEO level have the duty to advocate for a more forest positive engagement coming from businesses. And of course, they are great at enabling the message to be conveyed across uh, many, many audiences. You of course also realized that I forgot to say that my boss, Wei Chan Chan from the Consumer Goods Forum also give you a brief introduction to the topic. You get that for yourself. Um, but now, so we registered 150 participants, as said, and uh, it will be my pleasure for you to uh, let Chris McGrath um, from the Mondelez company and also Bertrand Svideski from Carrefour to introduce you a bit better onto what has been going on within the Forest Positive Coalition for the last 12 months since we launched it uh, at Climate Week last year. So it's my pleasure to give the floor to Bertrand and uh, of course, Bertrand, as you all know, we are uh, supported uh, in the Forest Positive Coalition by our friends from the Tropical Forest Alliance and Pro Forest as well. And can you explain us a bit more what has been going on and how we get to this point of being able to start the reporting for transformational change? Thank you. Thank you, Didier. Thank you so much. And uh, I, am, uh, I am very happy to be here. To be here with you today, and, uh, and uh, so I am Bertrand Zierski. I am the Chief Sustainability Officer of Carrefour, and the co-chair of uh, this uh, super uh, coalition, the Forest Positive Coalition. So as a coalition, uh, uh, we are bringing together the top consumer goods company to create a new industry norms, to drive us towards deforestation free across all our supply chain, as it has been said by our CEOs. First, we as a company, we must be fully aware of where our activities are linked to deforestation. It's key to start and in order to concentrate our efforts toward deforestation free. We address you today on behalf of the 20 members of the Forest Positive Coalition. We are dedicated to transforming our business models and sourcing practice together to enable a forest positive future. Our coalition is about collective action, transparency and accountability. Well, that's why today we share our inaugural uh, annual progress report. Uh, is, it is an initial attempt to demonstrate collective action and an harmonized approach to reporting progress. I am joined by my co-chair Chris and, uh, and uh, we can tell you more about this report and why this report is so essential in our coalition. Chris, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Bertrand. It is an exciting day and it's one that we've been working for, for a long time to get here. Uh, I'm delighted to be with you all. I'm Chris McGrath, co-chair of this Forest Positive Coalition with Bertrand, and I am VP and Chief of, of uh, Impact and Sustainability at Mondelez International. Uh, I also would like to thank our, you saw the video with our, our co-chair, uh, CEO co-sponsors, excuse me, Grant and Alexander, and they've just been uh, wonderful partners to us along with Y Chan and Didier in uh, developing this work over uh, more than a year. Um, so today is a great step forward. It's our first attempt to demonstrate the collective transparency uh, as we pursue collective action to advance uh, the transformational leadership that's necessary to reshape our businesses and our industry sourcing practices, as you said, Bertrand, so that we can together create a forest positive future. Um, with this report, it's, it's a, an important step forward to show the world our commitment to transparency, um, something that we feel very accountable for, uh, to, uh, to know what's going on in our own supply chains, to be open about it with the world. We feel like having that strong foundation and transparency is key to know whether we're making a difference and whether we're moving forward. Um, and, and we do believe you know, that we have an important role to play as the leading industry players, but this is not something, this transformation is not something that we can do by ourselves. The partnership with Tropical Forest Alliance and Pro Forest uh, and the supply chain expertise that they bring and the multi-stakeholder uh, input that Tropical Forest brings has been essential to our work and it will be going forward. We want to thank them for uh, always uh, taking, a, always challenging us to do, reach for more and to do better. It's been tr uh, really critical to the work. Uh, and we encourage others with this report to join with us. This is not, you know, we're excited about our 20 companies but uh, really transformation of these supply chains will require more uh, collective action, more companies to get involved. 
uh, and uh, more suppliers, et cetera. So this is the beginning of the journey. Um, we, are, we will continue to importantly work to further our actions uh, and more, more to come on that and the actions that we're taking uh, as we continue to develop our uh, theory of change and put it into programming and more to come as we continue to harmonize our ways of reporting. And as always, uh, I think one of the, the, the principles we've held is feedback is a gift and we welcome your feedback. Uh, we welcome your questions today as we go through the panel. So thank you so much for your interest and in being with us today. Thanks a lot, Chris and Bertrand. Uh, great introduction. Nurturing Transparency, the Path to Forest Positive is the title of our report. And uh, to discuss transparency, but also accountability, uh, we effectively have a great panel today that will uh, speak about their views on how to make companies more accountable, on how to effectively report progress when it comes to uh, enabling and achieving a forest positive future. And uh, we therefore gathered experts four of them that can help in better understanding what are the key challenges, but also the benefits of increasing our transparency mindset and making sure that we have the right tools and approaches to report against KPIs that deliver on progress. So I will uh, now, of course, introduce you to our panelists, starting with uh, NL Belfield um, from the Global Canopy Program. Uh, Ellen, can you please give us a few words about yourself? And thanks again for joining us today. Thank you. So I'm Trace Lead at Global Canopy. Trace is a data-driven transparency initiative that maps um, the international trade and financing of agricultural commodities, providing data for companies, governments, and financial institutions to address tropical deforestation. And it's a partnership between Stockholm Environment Institute and Global Canopy. Great, thanks a lot. Uh, now, it's my pleasure to introduce you to André Guimaraes, uh, who is working for uh, IPAM Amazonia, the Amazonian Environmental Research Institute in uh, his capacity as director. André, the floor is yours. And again, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Didier. Thank you. Thank you all for, for inviting me here. Thanks to the CGF and congratulations for the for the Forest Positive Coalition for the first year of uh, its first anniversary and looking forward to the, to the years to come and to the results that uh, the coming years will, will bring to us all. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. As I said, uh, as, as, as Didier mentioned, my name is André Guimarães. I'm an agronomist by training and I've, uh, I'm one of the leaders of, of, of IPAM, the Amazon Environmental Research Institute, uh, an organization that has been around for about 25, 26 years, basically producing uh, scientific information that we understand is, is crucial for decision-making processes towards protecting uh, natural habitats in Brazil and in other tropical countries at the same time that we, we need to promote uh, sustainability activities and sustainable practices in order to for people and for the economy to thrive. So the challenge that IPAM is, has been facing over the past several years is how to match uh, human activities and forest conservation. And, uh, once again, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Didier. Great, thanks again, André. Uh, and the last stakeholder of this Forest Positive Coalition is Jeff Milder from the Rest Forest Alliance, also the director of the Backbone team at the Accountability Framework Initiative. Uh, Jeff, please take the floor. And again, thanks for taking the time to be with us today. Great, thank you, Didier, and thanks to the co-chairs. Um, I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm here today representing the Accountability Framework Initiative, or the AFI, which is a coalition of 25 environmental and human rights organizations from around the world, um, all working to create a new normal of responsible supply chains that are protective of forests, ecosystems, and human rights. So a lot in common with the CGF's agenda. Um, all of our coalition members stand behind and work to apply the Accountability Framework which was published in 2019 and provides a common roadmap for setting commitments, taking action and monitoring and reporting progress on responsible supply chains. Um, so my comments today will be grounded in the accountability framework and especially its guidelines on transparency and accountability. Very good and very, very uh, relevant. 
Our last speaker for today is not a stakeholder. He's actually a coalition member. He's from Mars, our uh, sponsoring company. And it's Kevin Rabinovich, Global Vice President uh, of Sustainability, again at Mars. Uh, Kevin, thanks for your time today. And in your role as the lead of the Transparency and Accountability uh, Working Group here at the Forest Positive Coalition, we will definitely be delighted to uh, hear your thoughts on how we've been managing to deliver on this report today. So please uh, introduce yourself uh, to our great audience today. Ah, Kevin, you're on mute. This happens. Yes, I was. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Didier. And uh, yeah, great, great to be here. So um, uh, yes, with Kevin Rabinovich, I, I lead the uh, environmental side of the sustainability program here at Mars uh, and, uh, and have been closely involved with development of the, the coalition. Uh, actually, uh, you know, we launched a year ago, but, but it actually goes back four years. And so at the, uh, the very start of this process, my, uh, my beard was nice and dark like Didier's and Jeff's and, uh, and you know, now uh, time has moved on. And so, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's very exciting to, uh, to have gotten to, to this milestone, but, but we're not done yet. There, there's more to come in the future even. So, uh, well, Kevin, uh, apart from the forest positive impact on beards, uh, I would like you to walk us through the ambition around the Forest Positive Coalition when it comes to transparency. As you say, it's been a couple of years in the making. We officially launched a year ago because we needed time to finesse our theory of change, but also involve gazillions of stakeholders, notably under your leadership. Uh, and uh, it's been always a key goal of the coalition and its members to make transparency a reality. But that means a lot of things for many people, and we have 20 plus very diverse companies when it comes to maturity, size, structure, <clears throat> global coverage. How do we understand transparency and how do we provide a collective vision of what it means for a collective of company like ours? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, you know transparency at, at multiple levels and in multiple ways is, is really central to, to what the coalition is about. So you know, in, in late 2017, um, you know, at, a, at an internal CGF meeting, we, we aligned on the realization that, that, you know, there were going to be some challenges around the commitment we had for 2020. And so that was the first conversation. The second conversation was going out to the outside world, including, for example, Jeff was actually in that original group of people that we talked to, to, to ask questions of what did people think needed to be done differently? What needed to happen? So, so right from the word go, we were, we were sort of open about the need to, to develop a better theory of change and, and do something newer and bigger to, to really drive the, the change we needed at scale. And, and we've maintained that transparency and openness all the way through the process of developing the theory of change. We, we iterated between working inside the coalition and then showing our work to the outside world to get input and steer, and then taking that and, and doing some more work and, and iterating back and forth. So we've been through multiple cycles of, of drafts of roadmaps that eventually turn into final roadmaps. And, and so, so that's been part of the process all the way through and, and will continue to be part of the process going into the future. And I think you know, today's report is a, is a major milestone in, the, in that journey. I think the other thing I would say, or another thing I would say about transparency and accountability is one of the insights that we, we picked up or developed early on in, in the process was that for this to really succeed, we needed to move from sort of headlines and long-term goals, or maybe in addition to having headlines and long-term goals, we needed to really get into some of the details and start looking at performance. Um, and, and that was something that we had missed in the original 2010 resolution that we'd set, is we, we hadn't gone to the level of detail that was necessary, and we hadn't put a mechanism in place to start watching and tracking performance. And so that was one of the things that we were very deliberate about designing into the new theory of change, which again is sort of shown by the reporting uh, coming out today. And, and so that report by linking to individual company reporting on individual KPIs and in each of the roadmaps, you know, there's some, there's some tables at the back of the report with lots of little dots and boxes and, and links. You know, I think that's really um, a, a, a see change in, in the sort of corporate approach to working collectively on deforestation. So instead of all of us reporting in our own ways and our own reports and, and making everyone hunt and dig and try and find the information and compare and, you know, when Chris says this and Kevin said that, were they really saying the same thing? What did it mean? You know, so we're, we're, we're doing the work to bring all that together to, to make it easier to understand collectively what's going on. We aren't 100% there yet, to be clear. We have, we have more work to do, but, but this is a significant step, uh, step forward. And I think 
you know, maybe the last thing I'll say is in addition to, to having engaged with stakeholders all along the process and gotten input and feedback and, and open comments, we've been very transparent about sharing back to the community what we've heard, right? So when we get comments, they get collected and they get shared back and, and everyone can see what all the comments are. And, and even in our report, you see we've got, uh, I think it's maybe half a dozen um, stakeholder comments added at the back many of which are quite complementary of the work we're doing, but some of which have some critiques and, and tell us some things that we could, could and should be doing better. And, and you know, so we're not, we're not sweeping that under the rug. We're, we're including that in the report and, and we've heard those messages and, you know, we won't necessarily be able to do everything that everyone wants, but we want to, we want to be open and transparent about what feedback we're getting and, and how we're, how we're addressing it. Thanks, Kevin. And it's true that <clears throat> I would say that stakeholders have not only been not only been a key component of our transparency ambition, but also a key support in making us more transparent. And uh, the stakeholder feedback published at the end of the report is also showing that there is more work to do. And that's why we value so much the critiques and also positive feedback when due uh, from uh, the numerous stakeholders forming part of the forest positive community. Uh, by the way, speaking of the report itself, it comes as a complement of a strategy report published earlier this year, which is called Taking Root. And uh, we, of course, advise for you to look at those two in combination so that you can effectively understand uh, some of the key elements that uh, Kevin was uh, talking about, because it outlines the strategy. And of course, now we have all these reporting elements that will set the baseline for further progress reporting in the coming years. I also wanted to uh, do a personal thank you to our comms team here at CGF that effectively made this report look, I think, pretty good. And with those little dots and everything. So making sense of uh, reporting is not always easy. So thanks Madeleine and Lee notably for all the good work you've been putting into that. I'm gonna move on to our uh, stakeholders that are of course giving us the privilege to be on this panel and ask what does transparency and accountability mean to you as an organization because you are effectively contributing to our work you effectively set the scene to define what transparency and accountability should be about so that's why ellen i would love to hear you first talking about what does it mean to you and how can we effectively make sure we constantly improve on our way to process with transparency and accountability great thank you so in this context transparency for trace means the public disclosure of progress on implementing deforestation and conversion resourcing, not only the successes, but also the challenges. And as Bertrand said, these disclosures are predicated on a company having information on where it's sourcing from and the impacts such as deforestation in these places. And this is what trace is focused on. So trace uses publicly available data to provide transparency of supply chain connections between markets, traders, assets and production landscapes. And this transparency is critical both to enable companies to manage supply chain risks but also in strengthening monitoring and accountability systems to assess the effectiveness of different interventions and progress towards deforestation free sourcing and critically transparency is most powerful when it's standardized against norms such as the afi which i'm sure jeff will pick up on um, and also covers whole sectors very good Andre, in your view, what's transparency and accountability about? Um, it means a lot. Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, we've, uh, our organization has been working over the past uh, couple of decades or so in, in trying to find uh, the, the harmonization, let's put it this way, between human activities, uh, land use, agriculture, ranching, and so on, and forest conservation, initially in the Amazon, uh, but more recently also in the Sahara, the Brazilian central savannas. And we do uh, believe that through our uh, science, we can influence decision-making processes. Uh, and in order to real make things uh, differently or, or promote a different agenda, which uh, in our view is a more, uh, more of, a, of, a, of a paradigm uh, that we call intensification uh, in, in, in replacement to a, an older and outdated paradigm of extensive extensification, if I can say so. Uh, we need uh, uh, transparency. We need uh, you know, the, the different uh, 
uh, stakeholders in the value chain to, to hold accountable for what they uh, buy, what they sell, how they process, how they produce. So uh, uh, in our view, uh, Didier and friends, it's a, it's a fundamental piece for uh, you know, promoting the, the, the integrity of, of the Amazon and the natural uh, forests that we, we, we understand are necessary for, uh, you know, for us to continue living in this, in this planet. So I think it's a, it's a crucial element and uh, bottom line is uh, it's, a, it's a fundamental piece in showing uh, on one hand to decision makers that uh, you know, things need to change, needs to be performed differently on one hand, but on the other hand, to show to consumers and to those that are making the purchase decisions at the end of the line that uh, you know, product A or service A has a, a higher standard, has a higher quality, has a higher uh, role in protecting forests than product or service B. So this is, uh, in our view, uh, a centerpiece in, in achieving our mission. Very good. Very interesting. So data, science, all of these are effectively constitutive of transparency and accountability. Jeff, uh, accountability framework initiative, you are rightly placed to effectively have an opinion on what it means and how companies like the ones belonging to the Forest Positive Coalition should handle it. Can you please give us your view? Absolutely. So to us, transparency, very simply, is about open communication from a company to its business partners and stakeholders about their business and about its risks um, and performance on key environmental and social issues. That communication, of course, needs to be grounded in supporting evidence such as credible monitoring data. Accountability is when you take that information and put it to its most important use, namely to inform decisions by buyers, investors, regulators, and other stakeholders. And these decisions, of course, can have ramifications for the company's business, either positive or negative, and that's what creates accountability. Um, in our view, sound transparency on the part of companies has a few important features. First, it needs to cover several dimensions, including the company's risk and exposure to the subject issues, um, its policies and commitments to address these issues, the actions being taken to address them, as well as actual performance and outcomes with regard to these environmental and social issues. Each of these is an important part of the picture and all of them are needed to have the full picture and thereby achieve real transparency. Um, secondly, as I think was already alluded to, it needs to be comprehensive. Um, transparency needs to cover the entire scope of the company's supply chain footprint and impact, not be limited to certain supply chains or business segments. And third, it needs to use accepted metrics and methods so that performance is measured and reported in a standardized way. That's really essential so that the information is accurate and comparable and so that it can be relied upon by users for its decision-making purpose. Jeff, since I have you now on the line. What are your impressions about the Forest Positive Coalition report? And you were speaking about accepted metrics and standards, and we developed KPIs for all our commodity roadmaps covering to date soy, paper pulp, and fiber based packaging, and also palm oil. Do you think that, like we do, we, we have been taking the right route towards efficient and uh, good reporting? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, so uh, I have a bit of time series data on this point because actually two weeks, two years ago at New York Climate Week, I sat on a panel on this exact same topic uh, with Kevin. Um, unfortunately, we can't be in person this year, but um, the good news is that I think we've come quite a distance since then over those two years. And most fundamentally, the Forest Positive Coalition and this report rest on a sound theory of change. Namely, that companies um, need to control the volumes in their own supply chains, but they also need to use their influence to drive supplier-wide and landscape-level improvements um, in order to solve the challenges on the ground. And this theory of change is very well aligned with the accountability framework. It's based on the learnings that we have from the first several years of work on these issues. And for us, it's a really key feature of this report because it establishes the goals against which accountability can be carried out. Um, we also um, appreciate the scope of the KPIs in the report, um, which address several of the key transparency elements that I just mentioned. And we also really like the tables at the end of the report. So kudos to 
the communication there and also all the work that underlies it. I think this provides a very good at a glance view of the status of transparency across the coalition, um, as well as the links to the individual disclosures, many of which are very useful. Um, what else would we like to see? We'd like to see more collective in the transparency side of the, the coalition's collective action approach. Um, this report is mainly a compilation of individual reporting, and that's very valuable. It's very valuable that it's organized as it is. But to assess whether the overall strategy is working, we need to understand overall performance and trends across the collective supplier base for these companies for each commodity. And that's how we would know whether the initiatives of these downstream companies are adding up um, to shift practices at the supplier level and on the ground. Um, we're also looking forward to see member companies fill some of the um, gaps in transparency that are acknowledged in the report, such as information on trader performance and information on embedded soy. Um, and we've also submitted comments um, that should be published at the end of the report. So um, a few other points are there for those who would like to dig into that. Brilliant. And effectively, I mean, uh, the CGF is designed to drive collective action that should benefit business and people. But it's always easier said than done. Yet, I mean, we continue with that objective in mind. Helen, when looking at the report, is it something that is different than what you have seen before? Is there anything else that you would like to see from a trace perspective inside this report so that the next coming ones uh, may be improved? Yeah, so just to build on what Jeff said, I think seeing the standardized reporting is a huge step forward, um, and we welcome that hugely. Um, we also really welcome the shift from individual supply chains to supply base and the inclusion of both direct and indirect suppliers, which is a critical issue. Um, and I think looking ahead, we're very keen to see the landscape element of this and how, how that evolves, both in terms of the KPIs, as Jeff was saying, in terms of understanding the collective impacts and whether it's having the ultimate impact that we're looking for in terms of addressing deforestation, but also in terms of the role of addressing indirect suppliers, which we know is a significant part of the sourcing. It's inherently dynamic, and therefore we need to shift beyond traceability. Um, and that's where I think the landscape element can have a really important role there. Um, also looking forward to the definition of high-risk regions and how that aligns with some of the other work going on, particularly with the Soy Manifesto and the national um, strategy in France to make sure that these high risk region definitions are consistent and we don't get ourselves back in, back in the previous model we've seen before. And I think finally, as Chris mentioned earlier, there's a, a lot of CGF members are part of the Forest 500. So back in 2019, we identified that 80% of the 74 com companies in the CGF that are part of the Forest 500 have made at least one public commitment for one commodity. So we'd love to see more of those companies join this coalition and start to report consistently across the board on their progress. Um, so yeah, looking forward to seeing how that progresses as well. Yeah, very good. I think that like all these points are well taken and we are currently effectively integrating this also as additional feedback because we truly believe that uh, yeah, that's only the only way we can effectively progress. As said, like if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. When it comes to reporting, it has been a journey. And I want to thank all the members that you can see here, but technically all the members of the Forest Positive Coalition, because this has also been one exercise for them to gather all the data and submit it as part of the report. We know there are still gaps, but that, as Kevin will probably say, also shows that that gives our KPI a certain level of ambition, because if we would have been reporting 100% by the first report, that probably means that we would have set the bar too low. Uh, speaking uh, of which, again, thanks Pro for us for helping bringing all the data together and make sense out of it so that we can collectively report transparently for greater accountability. We heard a lot about, well, how we could improve, but I wanted to ask Andre from a regional perspective, transparency, this type of reports, how corporations are effectively reporting. Why does that matter when it comes to regional challenges and how can it help effectively overcoming those challenges from an Amazonian perspective? 
Thanks, India, for the question. Uh, this is a, I think it's a good moment to put the Amazon in perspective, friends. Uh, uh, we're, we're talking here about somewhere between 30 and 40% of the global above ground carbon. We're talking here about 50, 55% of the globe's uh, tropical forests. We're talking here about a, a, a carbon storage equivalent to 10 years of human global emissions, carbon emissions. So this is a humongous, uh, the Amazon is, is, has an enormous importance when it comes to uh, mitigating or mitigating climate change or achieving the, the Paris Agreement's objectives uh, by the end of the century. So uh, scientists would say uh, that, you know, there's no way we are going to get to 1.5, not even 2 degrees centigrade by the end of this century if the Amazon's integrity is not kept. So this is that gives us a little bit of the perspective of, of the importance of, of these biomes, uh, integrity and so on. This is on one hand. On the other hand, it's under threat. Simple as that. It's under threat for political reasons. It's under threat for economic pressure. It's under threat for social uh, inefficiency. So it's under threat for a number of reasons. So we have to find, uh, you know, what I like to call a, a new contract for the Amazon. What brought us here, which has uh, consumed, you know, 50% uh, of the central savannas, the Brazilian central savannas, and 20% of the Amazon, the, 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 let's say that the production system that brought us here, which is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not here criticizing decisions that were made 40, 50 years ago, but they were important at the time. You know, Brazil, for example, was a was a net importer of food 50 years ago, and now it's one of the largest producers and exporters of, of agricultural commodities in the world because of the technology, investments, infrastructure, and because of half of the Cerrado and 20% of the Amazon. But this paradigm can continue. This process can continue from now on for a number of reasons, because we need, you know, the climate stability. We need, uh, you know, the biodiversity of the Amazon protected for the future generations. But we need now the water that, uh, you know, the Amazon produces for the commodity systems in Brazil. You know, 90% of our agriculture in this country is not, uh, is not irrigated. So when the closest thing, thing we have to a factory of water is the Amazon. So putting that in, 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 uh, in, uh, in perspective here, I think, uh, you know, traceably looking from where I am, looking from, uh, from the beginning of the value chain, you know, looking from the farms, the ranches, the smallholders, the family agriculture, you know, traceability and, and, and accountability and transparency as a whole is a centerpiece uh, when it comes to, you know, the future of this, this production, the future of, of the, you know, the, 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 the country's development. And, you know, even, even you know, we can, we can expand that for South America. Because you know Argentina, Paraguay, other neighboring countries do depend on the water cycles that comes from the Amazon. So protecting the Amazon is is fundamental to you know to the Amazon, to Brazil, to South America, and to the world at some extent when it comes to climate stability and and food security. So again, uh, you know, putting that into a into a, a you know into light uh, from our end here is 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 crucial. So uh, I think we. We still need to do way more. We, we, we are still uh, in, the, in, the, in the first uh, infancy of, of traceability for a number of, of uh, uh, products and services that comes from the Amazon and from South America in general. But we need to move forward. And I think the discussion that we are having here today, all of the, the intelligence and the commitments that surround uh, you know, this, uh, this forest uh, positive coalition is, is fundamental for us to move the needle up and to move to the next level. And, and uh, once again, uh, looking forward to the, the future of this initiative, which is fundamental for, you know, the mission of our institution, which is keep the main, the, the maintain the integrity of the Amazon, but also, you know, as I mentioned to the, to the world at some extent. Thanks, Andre. And it's true, our members represent for many, for many part of the Fortune 500, uh, just a note on Forest 500 that just shared a tweet welcoming the report, but looking for progress to happen over years. So we're very happy with that. And hearing about the comments of the panelists, uh, we are actually encouraged to do more. But now, greater transparency, greater accountability, it all comes also with alignment from various companies that have various approaches, but also looking at very different frameworks uh, that apply to them. Uh, and therefore, when it comes to our approach, Kevin, I would like to know how do we seek alignment 
both internally from a coalition standpoint, but also externally with key approaches like the AFI and others. How did you manage that? And what's our position now on where we stand vis-a-vis -vis this necessary alignment? Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, it's a great panel when, when I've heard about six things from the others that I want to respond to, but I'll, I'll, I'll take your question first, Didier, which is, um, yeah, I think it's important to understand that, that really at the heart of our theory of change was the, the recognition that each of us as companies worrying just about the volume that we were buying from a supplier and sorting out our own supply chain, as it were, and then sort of, you know, mentally kind of stacking up Lego bricks of, you know, what, e what each of us asked from all of our suppliers over time, that somehow that, that would eventually create a wall. And, and the, the big change that, that we've come together in our thinking is actually, we need to all be trying to build a wall and, and all be asking for the same thing. And, and so, you know, when, when, you know, we're all asking our suppliers, not just about the volume we buy, but about the entirety of, of their business, it becomes even more important that we're asking them the same thing. You know, it's, it's inefficient, but it would in theory be possible for a supplier to do one thing on the volume they sell me and something else on the volume they sell Chris and something else on the volume they sell Bertrand. You know, it's not the best way to do it, but you could kind of do it. But if we're all asking them to change something about the entirety of their business, we have to be asking them for exactly the same thing or, or they can't do it. And, and because that's so central to our theory of change, that really dials up the need for, for the alignment and the consistency, even more so when, when we get to some of the points that Andre was making of, of thinking about at a landscape level, where perhaps we're needing to engage with you know, sectors completely outside of the ones that we're focused on. We do be engaging with mining or with, you know, urban development or, or subsistence agriculture. You know, as you get into these other areas, you know, we, we've got to have that sort of co coherent vision of, of what we're trying to accomplish. I think the other thing that, that is important to recognize is clearly we, we need transparency and data and, and KPIs to, to know that we're, we're doing the right thing and that we're making progress. And, and importantly, I think those KPIs need to be linked to a theory of change. You know, there's a bit of a history in this space of, of having KPIs about deforestation that are what we know how to measure, <laughs> but aren't necessarily, you know, hooked into a broader theory of change and, and what's going to drive the transformation. So clearly we need those KPIs, we need to measure them, but we need to spend as little time and as little money as possible measuring those KPIs such that they're sufficient to inform what we're doing. Because every dollar and every minute that we spend chasing KPIs is a dollar and a minute that we're not driving change on the ground, right? And so we, we want to measure to be inform our decision making, but we want to be as ruthlessly efficient about that measurement as we can be so that we have more resources to really solve the problems. And, and the way we are ruthlessly efficient is we drive that alignment. Um, and, and maybe here I'll pick up on something Jeff said of, of which I thought was a great sort of distinction between transparency and accountability. I would say where we've gotten to in, in the report is a serious milestone from a transparency point of view. Um, you know, we've, we've clearly mapped the reporting of all of the companies and, and all those little dots on the chart are not secret data reported to CGF. That's all public reporting from each of the companies. Those are links to what's in the public domain. So, you know, thumbs up on the transparency. Um, accountability, we aren't quite there yet because one of the challenges that we still need to solve is we aren't all as companies reporting all of those KPIs in exactly the same way from a methodology point of view. And, and that's the next step. And that's the next thing that we're working on. So that instead of just little dots on a, on a chart, we could actually maybe at some point get to numbers or, or data um, where, where you can actually start to do apples to apples instead of apples, oranges, and, and bananas. And so, you know, that, that's what comes next. And, and that's another reason that you know, if we really want to drive the change here is we, we need to keep pushing that, that detailed alignment. And maybe the last thing I'll say is in reference to, to Forest 500 as a, as a good example, you know, ultimately our theory of change here, the more people that pile in, the better it works. And, and so part of what we want to do is, and, and are doing actually, is having discussions with, you know, Forest Trends and, and Forest 500 and, and a number of other groups about, you know, with those organizations having been part of developing our theory of change and having been part of developing our roadmaps and KPIs, we want to explore the opportunity to get some of these KPIs built into how they assess 
companies, because then we're not talking about the 20 companies in the coalition and our suppliers. We're talking about the 500 companies that Forest 500 is looking at, or however many companies the WWF Palm Oil Buyer Scorecard is looking at, or CDP Forests, or, and you know, it goes on and on. And, and that is part of what we're trying to, to encourage to, to really broaden the scope of, of, of this. Uh, and again, you know, it all works better if we're all aligned on, on you know, not just the headline, but, but the details and the specifics of what it is we're trying to do. Yeah, and I think that like success for the Forest Positive Coalition will definitely also revolve around the fact that Forest Positive means the same thing for our businesses, our suppliers, our traders, our stakeholders, but also governments and stakeholders, of course. Uh, speaking of alignment, Ellen, you've heard that like we're looking at greater alignment, we're working on it. What do you think needs to happen to effectively align? So just to pick up quickly on that Forest 500 point, so Forest 500 has aligned with the AFI and that was a big step for us, as has other assessment groups. Um, just on your point, Kevin, so very happy to continue that conversation to make sure that we're assessing companies against norms as well, because we think that's a critical part, part of the puzzle. Um, in terms of alignment, um, I think Kevin also mentioned this around methodologies. There's a lot of, you know, and the next step in terms of understanding the methodologies and making sure that we are measuring apples and apples, not apples and oranges, to use to repeat the metaphor again. Um, I do think you know this stuff is challenging, even you know, even within trace and measuring something that sounds straightforward like commodity deforestation is actually incredibly challenging. There's lots of different assumptions, and depending on what assumptions you use, you can come up with wildly different results. So I think there is also a bit around understanding the complexity and being really clear on assumptions and methods. Um, and I think finally, just want to, I think a key part will be engaging, as you've said, with some of the government processes. So I mentioned briefly the French government process. I think it's critical that we try and align around particularly the, the definition around high risk regions and what that means. And again, the methodology underpinning that. Um, but also in terms of alignment, I think there is, there's an opportunity as well around engaging government um, who hold a lot of this data. And so both in terms of mandating disclosure and mandating disclosure in a way which is aligned with norms, but also in terms of um, facilitating access to this data, which takes the pressure off individual companies to disclose. So we know that governments have a lot of data on, you know, property ownership, commodity movement within a company, within a country, customs data, you know, and that sort of removes some of the burden of individual company disclosure. It's available across the entire sectors. So I think that's also an interesting avenue for the coalition to pursue as well is, is engaging with government on facilitating some government disclosure as well as, as well as company. Indeed, very important point in getting multiple data sources to make sure we get a clearer picture. Jeff, on greater alignment, what would be your view? What can help making it happen for real? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, you know, just to acknowledge, I think there is a solid foundation for alignment in the work that um, the coalition has done to date. Um, the common P KPIs are really helpful. They're grounded in the sector roadmaps. Um, the sector roadmaps, in turn, are, are strongly anchored in the accountability framework, which itself um, aligns across many existing international norms and standards, as well as market expectations. So there's a lot of what I might call embedded alignment in the work to date, um, which we appreciate. So going forward, I'll highlight um, three top priorities. Um, number one, uh, picking up on some themes that have been mentioned is to um, further specify the methods for assessing progress toward forest positive supplies both by the members and by their suppliers. Um, there's a few indicators of this for each sector. Um, these are such crucial indicators to understand um, whether the work of the members is actually leading to changes, change conditions um, upstream in supply chains and back to production areas. So picking up on you know, Andre's point that this is ultimately why we're doing all of this is because of places like the Amazon and the Serato. Um, the devil is very much in the details, as Kevin said. It isn't just saying, yes, this is generally what we want to measure, but this is exactly how we're going to measure it. And if we don't get to that level of specificity, then I think the type of insight and accountability that the coalition 
aspires to achieve will remain elusive. Um, so this is something that we still remain um, very actively working on. The AFI has um, guidance on outcome metrics um, and we um, are happy to continue working with the coalition as they further flesh out these indicators. I think relatedly, there's going to need to be more concerted pressure on traders to report consistently on these metrics as they're further defined. Um, that's the way that will create a stronger set of incentives for these suppliers to actually change their business. I, I don't think that pressure is, is there yet, at least not systematically. Um, second priority is to make sure that the CGF reporting system and reporting requirements are as interoperable as possible with the standards and, and disclosure systems that companies already use um, that are aligned with the framework like CDP Forest and GRI. Um, we, the last thing we need is another layer of duplicative reporting efforts or competing KPIs. Um, I don't think anyone wants that. And third, um, we see a lot of value in more explicitly linking the reporting on deforestation and supply chains to emissions reporting, um, which of course is you know, likely to be the, the real um, you know, driver of the bus in this decade. Um, the AFI is currently working on this topic with um, some key partners like the Greenhouse Gas Protocol, and we expect to uh, release some guidance next year, which we think will be very relevant to the coalition members as they work to integrate their own sustainability initiatives and reporting, um, cutting across emissions reductions and deforestation. Very good, many thanks, Jeff, very clear. Um, we have a few minutes remaining, and I wanted to remind the audience that you can effectively formulate your questions in the chat box, and we can then get them addressed to our great panel today. Uh, but my last question then goes to Andre for now. Uh, Andre, you are the regional perspective. We know that traceability is key and actually has to reach uh, the regions like the Amazon up to the most granular level. So it is, a, is it, it is a challenge. Everybody talks about it. Some people confuse transparency and traceability. But how do you see it to be unlocked? How can we make sure tra traceability becomes an effective tool for greater transparency? Um, excellent question, Didier. And, and, you know, I can translate my answer in an expression, which is the stick and the carrot. We need at the same time, you know, to put pressure on, on you know, looking, and once again, I'm looking from the, 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 the producer's uh, angle here uh, in the Cerrado, in the Amazon, you know, farmers, ranchers, smallholders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, you know, these guys, some of these guys do need the stick, you know, do need to, you know, uh, be hammered because they are doing the right thing and they, they are capable of, and they can be accountable for doing the right thing. You know, these are, you know, farmers, ranchers, once again, that do have the capacity, do have the technology, do have access to the means to do the right thing. And they need sometimes, you know, to be hammered uh, so that they go in the right direction. But at the same time, we also need the care of, because there are many, many farmers, ranchers, and so on that do not have the access to technology, do not have the access to the financial means to, to achieve, uh, you know, uh, traceability or to be able to participate in a traceable world, traceable commercial world, and they need to be incentivized somehow. They need to be, you know, looked uh, differently from, from, you know, the, 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 the majority or the, the, the or a substantial part of the, of the production, productive sector, which is uh, the ones that need the hammer. So uh, I think that the, the, it's, it's very subtle, but I think we need to find the right balance. And, and if, we, if we squeeze too much, you know, you, you end up having a, a substantial portion of the of the productive sector that you know it's 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 not going to be uh, it's not going to believe in traceability. It's not going to be willing to engage in traceability efforts, and so the damage continues. So if we do want you know beyond traceability, beyond accountability, if we do want the integrity of the environment, if if we do want to promote sustainable development, we need to look at the stick. And we need to consider the carrot at the same time. Okay, well, that's effectively a, a good approach. Let's hope that this works. And also, I think that the uh, connection with governmental actors, stakeholders, especially at the local level, will probably be the only way forward to make sure that this carrot and the stick are effectively working hand in hand to deliver on progress for Forest Positive. Um, just wanted to give 
uh, the opportunity to our uh, co-chairs, Chris and Bertrand, to uh, share their thoughts following uh, this great interaction at this panel. What yeah. are your takeouts? Happy to jump in because I was going to raise my hand with a question for our panelists, if that's okay. Um, sure. It's been a, a wonderful conversation and thank you so much. Um, just Jeff, I, I, I really liked your, your uh, comment there at the end about linking to emissions um, and how do we make that more seamless. So look forward to continuing that dialogue. But my question is, as Kevin sort of talked about, you know, the KPIs are an outcome. It, it, they're an important one, but do you have any advice for us on, you know, we, we're trying to drive action on the ground with our suppliers, we're working on our landscape strategy, more to come on that. But, but the, the, the KPIs are almost, I don't want to say they're too late, but it, it's, the, it's the outcome of the change happening on the ground. We're trying to drive change to the extent that we can. And as you said, Andre, it's a carrot and a stick, but um, I was in a, a conversation with uh, the TFA this morning around how do we have more incentives and you know, how do we help smallholders because deforestation is a symptom of lots of issues and I know you guys know it well, but poverty, you know, uh, the system's not working. Do you have ideas for us as we think about how we can drive action of things we should be looking at beyond just the KPI reporting, please? I know that's a big question, but welcome your thoughts. Um, I can take that one first. Um, if I understood the question correctly, maybe two parts to the answer. I think um, the first is to kind of look at the KPIs and transparency in terms of both leading and lagging indicators. So. I mean, what we're ultimately interested in is the lagging indicators, which is are things on the ground changing um, in the right ways. Um, but it's very difficult to, to create a direct causal link between the actions of companies and those lagging indicators because deforestation is such a complex problem. So we need to try to kind of intuit what's going on by also having the leading indicators, which are around things like policies, actions, investments, um, both of the companies and their suppliers. So I think a lot of the right KPIs are in there to do that. Um, and then as we try to make sense of this complex situation, we're essentially you know, looking for evidence that the contributions of those leading indicators is getting us where we hope we will be in say 2025, which is that we see significant reductions in deforestation in the places that the suppliers of your members are operating. Um, so there's one comment. The second, I think the you made a reference to sort of the place-based action and how do we um, look at impacts at, an, at a landscape level. And I think there's a another whole body of work going on in that space. Um, I, the other you know, half or quarter of my time I spend working on an initiative called Landscale, which is all around um, how to um, uh, you know how to measure trends at a landscape level and how to enable um, uh, say determination and claims around contributions of individual actors. And so I think, you know, that problem doesn't ne necessarily need to be addressed entirely within the forest positive coalition. I think there's a lot of other really important work in that space. Just a, a quick complementation, uh, Chris, and thanks for the question. Uh, you know, as, as, as Jeff said, I mean, and, and you've realized that deforestation is a very complex issue, yes and no. It is complex because it has multiple aspects and angles to it, but at the same time, it's simple because it's based on economic incentives. What drives deforestation, and I like to say that, what, what chops down trees are not chainsaws, is money. It's, it's you know, where the incentives are. You know, there's a, we can talk hours and hours about it, but there are some perverse, some know, lots of perverse incentives today for people to be land, grabbing land illegally, for people to be logging illegally and so on. So these incentives at some extent, they need to be replaced by you know, incentives to intensify the production, incentives to participate in, in traceable uh, value chains and so on. So I think that's the, you know, if we can find the, the right, uh, you know, incentives and twists and, and you know, arguments for bringing in you know, uh, new elements to local and individual and farm level decision making processes, I think we can achieve major results when it comes to uh, slowing and eventually stopping deforestation. 
Yes, so, so thank, thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, I think the discussion has been great, really great. And, uh, and thank you for all, to all the panelists. And uh, for myself, it confirmed that we are in the right direction. This is a good point. And, and, uh, and, uh, but uh, also we have to, to integrate uh, the, the, the way we measure KPIs, we have to, we have to integrate them in, in, uh, in our process. And it is a challenge for us, as it has been highlighted by, uh, by Kevin. And, uh, and uh, what we have to do now, we have to, 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 to focus our energy and our power to, to act concretely on the ground and, uh, and to act concretely uh, to be uh, deforestation free. And uh, I think, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's it is it is the great insight uh, I, I received from uh, from the, from the discussion. So thank you very much, thank you very much to all, and thank you also to all the team involved, and to make sure that uh, we've got this annual this this report today, and we can launch it. And uh, you can imagine how big and uh, uh, it has been uh, to 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 achieve and to reach this target today. So congratulations to all of you and uh, to the panelists, but also to all to all the team involved in this project. And thank you, CGF. Well, thank well you. Well said, Bertrand. Well said. Big thank you. <laughs> I think um, that's uh, almost what we could call the closing remarks. I may have actually one final question coming from the audience, which is quite meaningful, and we'll probably address it to Kevin. So while the reported action, <coughs> reporting on transparency is important, the reported action has to be meaningful. Will we intend at the coalition level to assess the progress of our members ourselves? Yeah, I think ultimately, um, uh, no, I don't think we should be assessing ourselves. I think the broader community should be assessing us. Exactly. And, and that's why um, we've gone down the route of companies doing public reporting and then CGF connecting to it. You know, in, in one possible vision of the future, to, to Jeff's point about not having duplicative reporting, all of the KPIs that are in our roadmaps companies would be required to report as part of CDP forests and forest 500 and, and whatever. And, and as the coalition, we could simply collate those responses, which are already in the public domain, focus specifically on the companies in the coalition, where I'm hopeful we would have better results than the broader community at large, but, but I think that's a great way of, of holding us accountable. So no, I think in the end, that's not what we as CGF want to do, you know, because that's a little bit of the fox, you know, guarding the hen house, right? You know, the the broader community should be should be judging us, not not us judging ourselves. Our our responsibility is to is to show what we're doing. Um, so, yeah. See, Jeff is the fox guarding the hen house. Well, I'm not going to that for my members, but I really like uh, this last comment. And exactly, yes, we'll be of course relying on external partners, largest stakeholders, but also governments to judge the progress we make when it comes to the reporting we do. And we hope everyone will join us on that journey because, as we said, we can't achieve a forest positive without your support, without more companies, without the feedback from investors and uh, stakeholders. And we need to get, of course, closer to governments to make sure that we all agree on what the positive for forest positive future means and how it's beneficial for both business and government. On that note, I think it's time to close with a little delay this uh, great event. Many thanks again for joining us during this climate week, second a year that we are effectively convening something around the Forest Positive Coalitions, and we hope there'll be many more years to come with always better progress to be showcased. And let's hope that we can have great case studies also to share across the board so that we can all get views of what a forest positive future should be looking like and make it a reality ASAP. Thanks again to our great panel today. Thanks to our co-chairs and uh, thanks effectively to everyone that has been listening in. Have a great day.